The easy way for all of us to journey these next 40 days, actually 46 days if you count the Sundays in there, would be to travel lightly, lightly, ignoring and hiding unpolished places of our lives. Right? If we just overlook all of those bad parts of us, all those things we don't want anyone to know about, just forget about them then Lent will be very easy. And we'll make it through without any scars, without any temptations, without any tripping up. Right? Probably not, really. It's interesting to me as I look out over this crowd of people who all have this big black smudge on your forehead, that Jesus just got through telling the disciples to do what? When you... Give alms, what are you supposed to do? Do it in secret. When you pray, you're supposed to? Do it in secret. When you fast, you're supposed to? Do it in secret. So how many of you are going to go out someplace after you get done here? Or how many of you saw somebody today that went to an earlier Ash Wednesday service? And here we are, wearing our badges of honor, right? I did my religious duty. I came and did what I'm supposed to do. Right? Maybe. You know, it would be very easy for us to tread lightly and to not bring up all of those things that God sees. But thanks be to God that we're not allowed to do that. Not in Lent anyway. This season teaches us that if we try to hide our imperfections, we cheapen the potential for personal and corporate renewal, restoration and resurrection. We cheapen the potential for our own personal and for corporate. That means the body gathered here and those who aren't gathered with us. Renewal, restoration, and resurrection. Lent is a timeout. Adults, you finally get a timeout. It's a timeout from everyday life. It's a timeout from things that are normal to set us apart into a way of life that brings us closer to Jesus and helps us understand who Christ is and who God wants us to be also. Psalm 51 is one of the seven potential psalms. Potential, is that the way you pronounce that word, Ruthie? Potential. Potential psalms. Seven potential psalms. How many psalms are there? 151, actually, because there's a 151st one in the Apocrypha, I think. Maybe 152. There's 150 in the Bible, though. So out of the 150, there are seven potential psalms. But penitential means to dealing with sin. So there's seven out of the 150 psalms that deal with sin. And out of those seven, only psalms 38 and 51 are the only ones that explicitly focus on confessing of sin. That's why every Ash Wednesday we read Psalm 51. Every Ash Wednesday we read Psalm 51. How many of you thought that when we read it, it sounded very familiar? It sounds very familiar because there's a lot of stuff in worship out of Psalm 51. It's one of the few Psalms, seven, that deals with sin. And it's one of only two that deals with us personally confessing our own sin. And it would behoove you, it's my big word for the night, behoove you and me to memorize those first two verses of Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love and the great compassion blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. This psalm, if you look at it in your Bible, will have the heading. Most Bibles have a heading. David, Nathan, and Bathsheba. Does anybody know what story that brings up? It's from 1 Samuel through 1 Kings, the story of David sending Uriah off the battle so that he will be killed so that David can have Bathsheba, Uriah's wife, for for himself. This is David's psalm of praying to God after the sin that he committed. 
in killing Uriah. These verses are very personal. And today is the start of a 40-day journey into Lent where we are supposed to personally walk alongside Jesus, where we are supposed to personally deepen our faith, deepen our understanding of who Christ is, and as Jesus says in the end of our gospel passage, store up treasures not here on earth but in heaven, to store up treasures someplace else so that nothing can take them away from us. Store up those treasures someplace else. So have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Interesting part there about abundant mercies. I'm not going to talk about too much, but abundant mercies. That word could be mercies. The word for mercies could be translated as graces. It also could be translated as um, intestines. Yeah, it's a little it's a little funny, actually, when you think about it. But it's the inner workings of God. It's that part of God that the Hebrews would have looked at as the motherly figure. It's the calling upon of mom to come and save me. Kids, you understand that, right? Not to bring down the wrath of the father. You call upon the mother to come in comfort and to tell you that things are going to be all right. Have mercy on me, O oh God. Have mercy on me. And then a little bit later on, there's the create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Right? That comes directly out. It's quoted directly out of Psalm 51 here. Do you realize that that word for create is hardly ever used in the Old Testament at all? It's not used that much. The verb for create is sparsely used verb in the Old Testament and is reserved for the sovereign power God exercises in doing something that's impossible. You can't do it. Only God can because it's impossible for us to be able to do it. Oh God, have mercy on me according to your steadfast love and create in me which I cannot do myself. Make me to be the person that you want me to be. So as we start Lent, I've already told you something that you could do. You can memorize those first two verses. I actually had sheets ready to be printed out. And they're ready. They're on my computer. I can print them out if you want one of the first two verses. You can tack it on your mirror at home. You can put it on your rearview mirror in your car, but please don't read it while you're driving. You can put it anywhere you want to that you're going to see it so that you can, over the next 40 days, memorize those two verses. And then think about how that helps you to be closer to God. Right? We have something that we should be doing during Lent. We should give up something. How many of you are ready to give up something for Lent? My daughter last year gave up her bed and meat. She slept on the floor all of Lent. So she said she's going to do it again. It'll be interesting to see. Did you know that you don't have to give something up in order to participate in the Lenten journey, the Lenten principles? You can actually take something on. You could, if you don't read the Bible, start reading the Bible. You could... Take a picture every day. I actually have a, a word that you can associate with a picture and take a picture and post it on social media. You can help a neighbor. Uh, Kristen sent me, a, me and Carrie, something a little bit earlier tonight about to take a bag, a trash bag, and every day go into your closet and take one item out of your closet that you don't need. It's something you haven't worn, something you don't use, put it in the bag. And at the end of Lent, give that bag to somebody that can use it. Give it to some organization that can help people with it. You can give up something by taking on a discipline of getting rid of stuff that you don't need. But what are you going to do? I can't tell you what to do. I don't know what it is that you need to deepen your relationship what it is that you need to get to the point where you can call on God and allow him to have mercy on you. But this season of Lent that we started here this evening is a season that helps us to refocus ourselves and all of our lives on God. Not by us doing something, taking something on or giving something us up, 
but by requesting God to do something in us through those things. Something that we could never possibly do ourselves. And in doing that, we will store up treasures in heaven. And people will not see us. They will not see the crosses on our foreheads. They will see God shining through all of our lives. That beautiful light that God wants to send out into the world. So focus yourself on Jesus this season of Lent. Follow him where he is leading you and let him be your guide so that you might have God shining through every last aspect of your life.